So update 26 dubbed Homecoming, guys, is bringing in a lot of new changes to the game. We're talking about a completely new map in Trumbull Valley, redone from State of Decay 1 in Heartland, more new bases, new combat changes, more guns, more outfits, even several new storylines. So my aim in this video is to help you guys navigate the most important aspects of this new update. We're going to cover the best bases to jump into that give you the most bang for your buck. We'll take a look at how to unlock the story missions. And no worry, guys, no spoilers in this video and what outposts that you guys should grab because outposts have been completely redone and they are not like how they used to be so if you guys are new here subscribe and join one of the fastest growing state of decay channels on youtube especially since 90 percent of you still haven't joined i cover news guides and live streams so we're going to start this off quickly with those players that are returning and have missed out on the last few updates i'm going to be quick here plague territories will now be in your map this is the red mist that covers big portions and if buildings fall under these you cannot claim those bases so you will have to to destroy the plague hearts that occupy that territory so just getting that out of the way for new players and returning players with that guys let's show how to start the new trumbull valley storylines now this update is actually bringing in not just big main storylines that kick off to the sequel of state of decay the original game in heartland but also new ones that you can really get into and experience something completely different this is going to be fairly easy to start off one of these first ones is you simply driving all the way down south you're going to meet up with tressy and you'll get a mission called tressy's quest a call for help and that kicks off one of the missions then we're going to go all the way to the northern right most part of the map in the tanner region and simply just driving up there you'll kick off the next mission called meeting cleo the doctor is calling i'm going to give you guys no spoilers here but those do kick off some of the new missions that you're going to enjoy in update 26 there's also a lot of cool easter eggs and a lot of new things that you guys will experience in this game that you've never experienced and i won't say anything else other than that and be really vague so get in on those missions and enjoy some some awesome awesome content with that guys we're going to take a look at my strategy for grabbing bases and what i think are the two best bases to jump into and my preferences are from open slots to where the bases are on the map for ease of access if you guys want an in-depth look at each one of these bases in trumbull valley take a look at the link below after this video is done but for me guys i think my playthrough i will be mostly using two bases in mind and while the red talon daybreak fob looks really sexy with the free red talon soldier and the free red talon facilities i'm going to skip that because it doesn't have many free slots for me to build but if you guys want a free red talon soldier go acquire that base but i think the two best bases are pterodactyl park and then farmland compound one is an early game base that is very easy to acquire and then you have farmland compound and this will be your end game base now as far as for the early base here pterodactyl park only costs 250 influence in the green zone or 500 in lethal and you only need four people then it comes in with built-in five beds and a latrine that can add up to plus 30 in total for a huge morale boost then a ton of open slots for facilities this one completely has my recommendation guys if you're starting a new community within trumbull valley especially since it's located in a great spot in the map near a main road it also has pretty good defenses for when you guys have to defend the base especially if you decide to add a tower so this base absolutely gets my nod for the early game as for the end game base this easily goes to farmland compound it's also the most expensive easily costing 1750 50 influence in the green zone or 3500 in lethal keep that in mind when you're deciding about this stuff but you only need six people versus fort marshall needs eight so if you guys don't roll big communities farmland compound is awesome it has a total of seven open slots for you guys to build whatever you want including four large open slots comes in with already a built-in infirmary as well as a kitchen with the backyard barbecue pit it's also at the very center of the map so it's very easy to access the entirety of trumbull valley and in the beta i have made it my home i have a lot of experience with it now and i've not regretted it one inch and i can confirm guys this is easily one of my favorite bases in the entire game and finally guys if you guys are a new or returning player outpost have really changed quite a bit and it really does affect your gameplay and how to go about your playthroughs when you acquire an outpost now they can be upgraded themselves they can also teach you a skill so keep that in mind but if i grab a food outpost for example in lethal it'll start giving me a plus two if i level it further it'll give me a plus four and if i level it a third time a plus six this is important because it gives you more choices for how to plan for what outposts you need in conjunction with what your community is lacking in lethal every person eats up two food so if i have eight survivors that's 16 food and that is quite a bit so i have to stack up food outposts to counter that big negative with the food consumption this will be different from everyone's playthrough especially if you play at lower difficulties or if you decide to build facilities like the farm to counter some 
some of these problems. So my strategy for you guys would be to look for what you're in dire need of. Grab the outpost for that. So if you guys need ammo, grab an ammo outpost, level it up as much as you need and counter your biggest needs. But the newest landmark outpost is Echo Labs Research Station. And I do think you guys should look into getting this one because of the ability to craft specialized items like the scent block and bloater grenades. Scent block gives you the ability to be almost invisible and not be attacked by the Z's and freaks and can really make killing plague hearts much, much more easier. Also, you can craft even more plague samples, which is really key to making plague cures and will, of course, save your life, especially in those higher difficulties. But keep in mind, guys, I would recommend making sure your community has the essentials before taking on the Echo Labs research station because it is very expensive, costing 1,000 influence in lethal and 500 in the green zone. With that, guys, let me know in the comments what other guides and things that you guys want to see from me to cover. What do you guys are also most excited for about this awesome update? Write that down below as I always read your comments. Subscribe and like the video. I'm Sunny, and as always, stay safe, survivors.